A reading from 1 Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the appointed time has grown short. From now on, let even those who have wives be as though they had none, and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they had no possessions, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it. For the present form of this world is passing away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boats, mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the Gospel lesson today, Jesus says, Time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Throughout this series, we're talking about how the mystery of God is revealed through the life and ministry of Jesus Christ, how the unknowable God is made known through Jesus. But if that's true, how come Jesus sounds so cryptic here? What does he mean by the time is fulfilled, the kingdom of God is near, repent and believe the good news? Have you seen the new Netflix show called Surviving Death? It's all about what happens to us after we die. And in the first episode, they interview folks who have survived a near-death experience. And most everyone they interviewed used similar words to describe their experiences, but the most extraordinary story came from this woman. Her name is Dr. Mary Neal. She's an orthopedic surgeon who, while on a kayaking trip in 1999, got pinned underwater for 30 minutes. When they finally recovered her body, her friends frantically tried to resuscitate her with chest compressions and mouth-to-mouth, -mouth, even though statistically there was no chance of her survival, even though if she did survive, she would certainly have severe, irreversible brain damage, even against all odds. They tried to save her life. And amazingly, it worked. After 30 minutes underwater with no oxygen, Mary survived with no signs of brain damage at all. And as amazing as all of that is, what's even more amazing is what Mary says she experienced in those 30 minutes. She said she looked down on her body from a vantage point above it and felt herself travel to a place that she now describes as heaven. She said it was like the feeling of returning home after a long voyage. And in that place, time seemed to slow down. It was an absolute shift in time and dimension, she said. I experienced all of eternity in every second, and every second expanded into all of eternity. 
all of eternity in every second and every second expanded into all of eternity. Theologian Tony Campolo says this about time. If I could get you traveling at the speed of light, 186,000 miles a second, all of time would be compressed into one eternal now. There would be no passage of time at all, and that's God's time. The very name of God suggests God's eternal nowness. I am that I am. With God, there is no past, there is no future. God never was, God never will be. God is an eternal now. Perhaps, perhaps that's what Dr. Mary Neal was trying to describe. Perhaps that's what Jesus meant by the time is fulfilled. Perhaps Jesus, who is the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, perhaps Jesus is the very embodiment of that eternal now. And now that kingdom of God, that heavenly realm has come near to you and me in the person of Jesus Christ, who says, repent and believe in the good news. In that same episode, they talked about how there are these support groups for people who have had near-death experiences. While folks often come back feeling profoundly changed for the better, seeing the beauty in everything, living without fear of death, they also have trouble reconnecting with their former life. The changes are so profound that they have trouble in their, in their marriage or keeping a job, or, or, or with things we've all become accustomed to, like materialism or, or capitalism. It's like they're living in the same old world, but with a whole new perspective, like they're living on a completely different plane of existence. That word from the text today, repent, comes with such a negative connotation usually stirring up feelings of judgment with threats of punishment. But the Greek word that we translate into repent is metanoia, which literally translated means a higher mind. Meta meaning above and noia meaning mind or knowledge. This is what Paul means when he says to set your minds on things above. This is how the gospel of Mark begins with John preaching a baptism of metanoia. And it's the same word Jesus speaks as good news to the people of Galilee and to us today. Perhaps these folks who claim to have experienced the fullness of time, the fullness of God, have also, because of that experience, come back with this metanoia, this higher mind that has set them free from their former ways of living. Perhaps what they are trying to describe has been laid out clearly in the scriptures for thousands of years. Perhaps this more elevated way of speaking about sin and repentance and freedom and forgiveness is just one more way that Jesus reveals the mystery of God. Jesus says, Repent and believe the good news. So here's the good news. Elizabeth Eaton, the presiding bishop of the ELCA, says, As baptized Christians, we've already died the only death that matters. In our baptism, we have joined Christ in death. And if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. 
And what that means is that we don't have to have a near-death experience to know this secret. We don't have to die and come back to learn how to truly live. We need only to look to Christ who has died and come back, who is the fulfillment of all time, whose life, death, and resurrection continues to reveal the mystery of God. Amen. If you've been blessed by the ministry of Zion Lutheran Church and feel moved to support and participate in its mission to welcome all people, to grow as followers of Jesus, and to serve all creation, then I invite you now to go to our website, zionlima.org, and click on the Give Online tab where you can set up a one-time or recurring gift. This ministry and so many others would not be possible without your generosity. However you choose to support or participate in our mission, I thank you.